Greetings and welcome to another Patch Notes video here at Words About Games, a fortnightly video series that lets us host discussions and post opinion pieces about our various thoughts on games, gaming and the industry. Today I want to give myself another excuse to talk about the amazing cadence of Hyrule, which is a game that you need to play if you haven't already. For anyone that doesn't know what this game is, Cadence of Hyrule is a Legend of Zelda themed crossover with dungeon crawling rhythm game Crypt of the Necrodancer, putting players in the shoes of either Link, Zelda or Cadence, the protagonist of the original game, and sending them off on a rhythm based Zelda like adventure in what is an amazing mashup of the two games. If you haven't figured it out yet, I absolutely adore Cadence of Hyrule. It's not just Crypt of the Necrodancer with the Legend of Zelda skin. Instead, it's a fully-fledged 2D Zelda entry with gameplay elements borrowed from Brace Yourself's game's previous outing, creating a wholly fresh Zelda experience that's quite unlike anything seen in the series, yet familiar enough to Zelda veterans that it always feels like a legitimate entry into the franchise. It was completely out of left field when it was announced last February as part of a Nintendo Direct, and it seems really odd that the Big N would suddenly commission an indie studio to make a totally unique spin-off of The Legend of Zelda series. As the story goes, Brace Yourself Games had approached Nintendo at some point seeking permission to use some Zelda assets as part of DLC for their own game, Crypt of the Necrodancer. I'm not sure how the conversation progressed beyond that point, however, according to my source, Nintendo decided to go one step further and asked Brace Yourself Games if they'd like to make a Zelda-based game instead. I'd imagine any studio wouldn't need to think too long about the kind of opportunity before saying yes as emphatically as possible. And it's definitely worked out for both the publisher and developer. Cadence of Hyrule is a critical hit, sitting at a very healthy 86 on Metacritic, with critics generally hailing it as a brilliant addition to the Zelda franchise. Fans seem to really love it too, with a really positive reception on social media among people who've played it. And while we don't have any sales figures, it was the number one downloaded game on the eShop when it launched, which is a positive sign. All in all, Cadence of Hyrule is a success story for Nintendo, Brace Yourself Games, and Zelda fans on the whole. But while I could probably talk your ear off about all the different ways Cadence of Hyrule succeeded, this video isn't a post-mortem, but rather I want to look to the future and what its success and mere existence could mean for Nintendo if they take the right lessons away from this. Some people who've been following me for a long time might dimly remember our many discussions about Nintendo's future before Switch was revealed. The company seemed stuck in a bit of a rut, while the Wii U had a fantastic library of games, it wasn't a great console. Whether down to the confusion surrounding the name, a weird marketing strategy, or the cheap god-awful controller, no one was really buying Nintendo's follow-up to its most successful console. One of the reasons Wii U wasn't at the top of anyone's Christmas list was that Nintendo's use of its IP was beginning to feel tired. The system had some really strong first party releases in the form of Mario Kart 8 and Super Smash Bros, but their biggest franchises were either missing or just weren't capturing people's attention. Captain Toad and Splatoon were great, but very much games that should be complementing temporal releases of Nintendo's biggest IP, which were either underwhelming, absent, or tied exclusively to Nintendo's handheld. It was during one of these discussions that I pitched an idea to my podcast co-host that Nintendo should let other developers loose on their IP. At the time, I was focusing on letting indie developers make smaller games with Nintendo's biggest franchises to complement the bigger releases and bridge the gap between main entries. Although it is worth mentioning that this could also apply to other bigger studios as well. I'd been inspired by the Square Enix Collective, a service created by the Japanese publisher to offer support and a platform for indie game developers to help get their games made or simply get more eyes on their projects. As part of the initiative, Square had announced that they were accepting pitches from indie developers to create games using the old IDOS IPs that they owned but weren't doing anything with, specifically Fear Effect, Gex and Anachronox. Square stipulated that they weren't looking for sequels to these games but were actively encouraging new twists on them. The example they used was turning Gex into a side-scrolling platformer or a turn-based strategy, which I mean, why hasn't anyone done this yet? Because Nintendo were at the forefront of our discussions, my mind raced with the possibility of them opening their back catalogue of IP to the wonderfully creative indie dev community and what wonders they could potentially create. It would be a fresh shot on the arm for their franchises and the company themselves. It was exciting to think about, although I never really expected it to go anywhere. Fast forward to June 2019 and we have an answer. Cadence of Hyrule. Although Nintendo never announced an initiative like the Square Enix Collective, this is exactly what it could look like if they did put something like that into practice. 
If there's one thing I hope Nintendo take away from Cadence of Hyrule's success, it's that their IP can be used in some truly brilliant ways that they themselves would never think of. Imagine, for example, if they allowed Tom Happ, the developer behind Axiom Verge, which I call the best 2D Metroid game ever released, to actually create a 2D Metroid game. Or what about z Games, developer of Cosmic Star Heroin, making a party-based Mario JRPG? Imagine a turn-based Legend of Zelda strategy game, or a narrative-based Animal Crossing in the style of Telltale Games, or a Souls-like Fire Emblem spin-off. Imagine Nintendo commissioning Platinum Games to make a Vanquish-style third-person shooter starring Samus Aran set in the Metroid universe. Oh, damn it, I've made myself really mad because that's probably never going to happen, but it sounds amazing. These are all just examples that I've cooked up in the last 20 minutes, except the Tom Hap one. I pitched that as part of my original thoughts on the topic years ago. They're not the most creative ideas. I mean, if I'd made this video in January, the list sure as hell wouldn't include a Legend of Zelda slash Crypt of the Necrodancer crossover. But my point is, the possibilities are endless when you actually stop to think about them for even a few minutes. And those possibilities are really exciting. Nintendo have now had two solid hits out of letting external developers create new spin-offs from their IP in Cadence of Hyrule and Mario Plus Rabbids. Hopefully, this is a signal that Nintendo are looking to partner up with more external developers to create even more wonderfully creative new spins on the universes and characters we all love. Oh, and on the remote chance someone at Nintendo stumbles across this video somehow, you can have all those ideas I pitched for free. I won't be mad if it means I get to play them. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, please leave us a comment, like, or subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We've got tons of awesome videos coming every week, including review impressions, indie game of the week, debate-driven top five lists, video essays, and our weekly podcast where we discuss games, gaming culture, and the games industry. We also stream three times a week at twitch.tv slash wordsaboutgames. But most importantly, have a fantastic day.